One of my favorite parts about making builds for PvP is getting to choose which exotic I want to build around. The choice often comes down to a few different decisions. Do I want something that's a little more generalized and that offers a buff to things like handling or movement? Or do I want to go for something more specific in my build where my exotic may only enhance one particular thing? In this video, I'm going to go over what I think the top 10 exotics are for hunters to use in PvP. Now, the method for choosing which exotics did or did not make the video were a combination of two things. One, the perks from the armor pieces needed to be consistent, or at least easy enough to reliably activate. And two, those perks needed to be relatively practical, meaning they should be things that enhance any actions that you normally perform within any given Crucible match. I will be sure to denote which subclasses you are able to use with each of these exotics. These exotics will be in no particular order, so let's start with probably the most obvious choice to make the top 10 today, the exotic leg armor, Stompies. Stompies are an exotic leg armor piece that improves your jump, slide, and sprint speed. Mobility and maneuverability are one of the strongest parts of a hunter's gameplay, and Stompies are the best option to increase those traits. Another thing that makes the Stompies so attractive is that they will work with any hunter build and any hunter subclass. So being subclass neutral, you'll almost always find yourself up against some Stompy wearing hunters in PvP. Not much else needs to be said for this one. If you're just looking for an exotic to help you move about the map, Stompies are the easy choice. If you're someone who likes to use their abilities a lot, then you may enjoy this next exotic leg armor, Frosties. The exotic trait for Frosties is called Rapid Cooldown. This states that you get increased grenade, melee, and dodge regeneration while sprinting. Dodging also increases your sprint speed. But how much of an increase do we get when we are sprinting? With all of the testing that I did, everything seemed to boil down to about a 50% decrease in cooldown to all of your abilities, no matter what tier you have for those three abilities. I tested grenade cooldowns at tier 5, when the normal cooldown should be around 59 seconds or close to a minute. After throwing my grenade charge and immediately sprinting until the charge came back, I was consistently cutting the cooldown time in half each time. Keep in mind, this decreases the cooldown of all of your abilities at the same time, so the more you use your abilities, the more bang for your buck you're going to get whenever you sprint. I do want you to be aware though that you probably won't be sprinting an entire match, so getting that optimal 50% decrease in your cooldown won't happen as much as you think it might. But do know that anytime you are sprinting, you are significantly reducing that cooldown, so take as much advantage of it as you can. In the current meta, holding the W key or just flat out sprint shotgunning isn't totally unheard of, even with the recent changes to shotguns. Frosties are a great option if you want to create a build that revolves around you just being an absolute ability menace. Have fun with it. Next on our list today is an exotic that doesn't necessarily buff anything of our own gameplay, but rather takes away from our opponents, and that is the exotic leg armor, Gemini Jester. Gemini Jester's exotic trait is called Misdirection, and it states that dodging disorients nearby enemies and temporarily removes their radar. So while utilizing the misdirection perk when you're next to people is cool and all, the disorientation isn't anything that is super disruptive to where it will significantly affect your opponent's ability to track you. Nor does it really make a difference if their radar is disabled because you're literally right in front of them. They're not looking at it anyways. So now you might be thinking, well then why the heck is it in the top 10? It literally sounds like garbage. I'd say one of the redeeming qualities of misdirection is that it can actually affect your opponents through objects and even walls. And where you can really capitalize on this is if you're a decently coordinated team to where you can communicate when you know your enemies are without a radar. The nice thing about this debuff is that it will actually give you a small numbered hit marker if you end up affecting someone on the opposing team. And based on how many hit markers you see pop up on your screen, that's how many people you know will be without a radar. Communicate that with your teammates and boom, you get a nice team wipe. While this exotic isn't necessarily benefiting us directly, it's giving us a little bit of a leg up on our opponents and allows us to be more in control of when the engagement starts. If you're an aggressive player, this is probably going to fit your playstyle a little better than if you're a hesitant player. Making our way up the Guardian, let's go over some chess pieces, starting with Raiju's Harness. Remember how I mentioned earlier that some exotics might have some very niche benefits? Well, that's Raiju's. Raiju's Harness has the exotic trait Mobius Conduit. And this states that pressing whatever your super activation button is, it will deactivate your super early. It also makes it so that when you guard, it does not consume extra super energy. Okay, let's start by going over the actual super. Raiju's will only be effective when using Middle Tree Arc Strider, since this is the tree that has the Whirlwind Guard super. 
Whenever you cast your super using Middle Tree Arc Strider, you have the option of using your super to block any incoming damage by holding down whatever your button is that you have bound to it. For default on controller, it's the left trigger or L2. On mouse and keyboard, I'm guessing it's default to right click. So the first part of Rise Use allows us to completely take ourselves out of our super and still keep whatever super energy we had remaining when we deactivated it. So if you misclick or you pop your super and all of a sudden the few people that you were going to use your super on suddenly died, you can actually deactivate it and keep whatever super energy was remaining. And even if you did kill someone, you'll still be able to keep whatever's left. This allows you to be really intentional with your super and it's really the only exotic in the game that you can be this intentional with. The only closest thing to it would be Geomags for Middle Tree Stormcaller. The second part of Rise Use says that guarding does not consume any extra super energy. As I mentioned before, Middle Tree Arc Strider Super allows you to block while holding a specific keybind. If you were to block for the entire duration of your super, your super would last for about 8 seconds. With Rise Use, it will last about 10 seconds, so you're saving about 20% of your super whenever you have Rise Use equipped when playing Middle Tree Arc. I really don't see a reason to even use Middle Tree Arc if you're not going to use Rise Use. This is a really cool exotic with some really cool perks and mechanics that are unfortunately locked behind a very mediocre subclass tree. Still, it makes the top 10 on our list today. As Samuel L. Jackson in Jurassic Park so eloquently put it, Hold on to your butts. Because the next exotic on our list today is arguably one of the best hunter exotics in the game, the Dragon Shadow. Dragon Shadow has the exotic perk Wraith Metal Mail, which states that dodging reloads all weapons and increases both movement and weapon handling speeds for a brief time. The Wraith Metal buff lasts for about 10 seconds. And the good thing about this is that if you're running tier 10 mobility, your dodge ability will be on an 11 second cooldown, which means by the time your Wraith Metal buff goes away, you'll only have to wait about a second to reactivate the buff. In terms of the actual buffs we get, anytime we dodge, all of our weapons get reloaded. That's pretty self-explanatory. And as for the weapon handling speed boost, it's essentially capping out all of our weapons handling stats to 100, similar to what Quick Draw would do. And finally, we get increased movement. Well, what exactly does that entail? When they use the word movement, they're actually referring to the mobility stat. And what Dragon Shadow actually does is it gives about a plus 50 stat bump to our mobility stat, though it will not exceed that 100 mobility barrier. So with the Hunter's Dodge being tied to the mobility stat, this means that in theory, you could run a minimum of 50 mobility on your Hunter and ultimately receive the same cooldown as if you were to run 100 mobility on your Hunter. You do need to be careful if you're choosing to run 50 mobility, as anytime you die while the Wraith Metal buff is active, it will go away, thus rendering your plus 50 mobility useless. My only slight drawback with Dragon Shadow is that if you're someone who likes to rely on your dodge ability to get out of sticky situations, this might not be the exotic for you. Because ultimately, if you're using Dragon Shadow, you're going to want to have the Wraith Metal buff activated as much as you can so that you can get the most use out of it. The problem then becomes, you're likely going to be out of that dodge charge even if you do run a max mobility build. In other words, if you're willing to give up your dodge charge for a majority of the game in exchange for faster movement, handling, and reloading your weapons, then by all means use Dragon Shadow. Just know that it is going to come at a slight cost. The next exotic chest piece to make the list today also needs very little explanation, and that is the 6th Coyote. And the 6th Coyote simply gives us a second dodge charge. Like I mentioned with the Dragon Shadow earlier, if you're someone who likes to use their dodge to be more evasive and help you get out of sticky situations, then giving yourself that extra charge to do that is going to be even more helpful, especially on a max mobility cooldown. A simple and utilitarian exotic. Moving up to Gauntlets, we've got a relatively new piece, Athras' Embrace, which, uh, buckle up. Using Bottom Tree Golden Gun will give us that one hit kill heavy weighted knife. Athras' exotic trait Skittering Stinger says that the weighted knife gains a second bounce. Any rapid precision hits we get with our weapons grants significant bonus damage to that weighted knife. The rest is basically for PvE purposes, so we'll ignore that for now. Anytime my weighted throwing knife hits a surface, it will bounce one time. When I equip Athras' we see that we get that second bounce off any surface, given that it's a relatively flat surface. The crazy thing about this is that despite being bounced off surfaces, the knives actually have an extremely high aim assistance towards targets. So you're actually probably better off bouncing your knives towards targets if you aren't able to just directly hit them in the head. On top of all of this, if you rapidly land 5 precision headshots, you can actually one hit kill anyone in the body. So if you're someone who likes to use auto rifles, pulse rifles, or SMGs, where you can easily achieve those 5 headshots, 
You're looking at a really lethal one-hit kill with your throwing knife, no matter where it lands on your opponent. Athrus's Embrace is criminally underused for how effective it can be in the right hands. Chunobu's Vow comes in as the next exotic gauntlet to make the top 10 today. Its exotic trait is called New Tricks, which improves our skip grenade and gives us an extra skip grenade charge. Our skip grenade also returns energy whenever it damages enemies. So while the skip grenade itself might not be overly strong, what this actually does is create a bit of a snowball effect. What I mean by this is that anytime you throw one of your skip grenades and it does damage to someone, you are getting more grenade energy put back into your second grenade charge. While this is happening, the skip grenade is doing a few different things. One, it's notifying you via sound cues and hit markers that it's doing damage to an enemy. Two, it is weakening your enemy. And three, it's making them retreat to a position where they are less lethal. If you're using Shinobu's Vow as more of a primer to engagements instead of a way to slay out and get kills, I'd imagine you would probably find more success. If you really wanted to maximize your grenade spamming, you could always spec double bomber mods on your solar class item so that anytime you dodge, you get a sizable chunk of your grenade energy back. Shinobu's may be more of a 6v6 playlist pick since there are more opportunities to actually damage enemies, but you can obviously find success with it anywhere given you use it well enough. Next on our top 10 list used to be one of the most obnoxious exotic armor pieces in the entire game for PvP. Wormhus Crown is an exotic helmet that gives us a small health and shield bump every time we dodge. The reason you would only see hunters wearing Wormhusk back in the day was because instead of giving you a small health and shield bump like it states now, it would just start regenerating your red health and your shields the moment you dodged. So if you were to have gotten a hunter to 1 HP, they would immediately dodge behind cover and within a couple seconds, they would be back to full health. Now, Wormhusk will still give you that small health and shield bump, but it doesn't begin that regenerating process. Wormhusk is still one of the best overall options for hunters in the entire game next to Stompies. Anytime you can intentionally give yourself health back is always going to be a top tier option, especially when you can potentially do it every 11 seconds. On top of that, it can go with any type of build on any subclass. It's one of the best neutral game exotics in PvP, and in my opinion, you should always have some kind of build ready that involves Wormhusk. It is so viable and super effective no matter what PvP game mode you're playing. Before we go over the last one, I do want to mention that I've got a couple honorable mentions at the end of this video. I actually had quite a difficult time once I got towards the last two or three exotics to choose because they all had some very unique qualities that basically just boiled down to which one I had the most experience with and had the most fun playing with. But anyways, if you've made it this far and have enjoyed the video, please consider liking the video. The more likes this video gets, the more YouTube decides to push it to other people, so it would really mean a lot to me. Alright boys, you know I had to save the best for last. You OGs of the channel hear me talk about this exotic all the time, and you're probably sick of it by now, but you know I gotta do it one more time. Mask of Bacchus is an exotic helmet that has the exotic trait Light Shift, which basically replaces our regular dodge animation with just an absolutely juiced up version of itself. It turns the dodge into a longer range, faster moving shift that partially cloaks you during use. The rest of the perk does not currently work in PvP, so we won't need to worry about that. There are a couple caveats when using Mask of Bacchus, since the shift is a pretty significant improvement to the normal dodge animation. Number one, you need to be running the Revenant subclass in order for it to work. Number two, each time you use your dodge, you will get a debuff timer on the side of your screen counting down from 10 seconds. During these 10 seconds, your dodge ability will not start recharging. As soon as the 10 second debuff goes away, your dodge ability will start to regenerate as normal. If you have the 10 second debuff on your screen and you die, the debuff gets taken away and once you respawn, you will start recharging your dodge ability as normal. So to recap, in order to use Bakris, you gotta be on the Revenant subclass. Each time you use your dodge, a 10 second debuff will show up on your screen. During this time, your dodge ability won't recharge. The only way your dodge ability will recharge is if you wait out the 10 second timer or you die, at which point your dodge will start to recharge like normal. The reason I'm so head over heels for this thing is because of how much room there is for outplayability. Once you really start to understand the animation of it and start to know when you can or can't get away with using it, it becomes a serious problem for your opposition. What I've found with the amount of time I've played with this specific exotic is that you can really push the boundaries of how aggressive you want to be in PvP. You can get into and out of some pretty precarious situations using this thing, and really elevates the freedom of picking and choosing when to engage and disengage from fights. The only thing that really takes some getting used to, especially if you've been running a max mobility build, is not having that dodge ability every 11 seconds. 
You're essentially doubling the amount of time you have to wait before you can use each dodge, which can take some getting used to. But once you've settled into it, you're good as gold. If you're someone who's been playing Revenant for a while, or even if you're someone who just wants to start playing Revenant, I highly suggest you give Bacchus a real shot. Now, there were a few exotics that gave me quite the struggle when trying to come up with this list today. There are three honorable mentions I want to add to this video, and I will briefly give my reasons for why I decided not to put them in the top 10. Omni Oculus, Gwiz Invest, and Young Ahamkara Spine are all decent options for PvP, but they each have some limitations to them. Omni Oculus is just the ultimate team player exotic, and while the concept of it is actually quite cool, the practicality of it in PvP is very low. Unless you've got the most insane team chemistry, you'll see very little benefit in PvP. I was very tempted to put Gwiz Invest in the top 10 because anytime we can add more time to our super is always going to be a big plus in my book. However, I just don't see it being as effective as something like Raiju's Harness, where we can actually cut off our super and still keep the remaining energy. The energy you gain from Gwiz Invest just isn't quite up to the standard of being used in my opinion. And finally, Young Ahamkara's Spine. I really struggled with this one. In my mind, I kept trying to validate that if I put Athras's Embrace in the top 10, then I needed to put Ahamkara's on. A big factor in my decision is the inconsistencies of the current maps having flat surfaces. The only real way to utilize trip mines other than actually sticking your opponent is to throw them on choke points to prevent enemies from rushing or to help prime them before you start a gunfight. Ultimately, I decided on Athras's instead of Ahamkara's because of the one-shot capability of the throwing knife versus the trip mine. I actually talked about some of the top subclasses for hunters in PvP, and one of the ones I talked about in that video was Bottom Tree Gunslinger. You can check that video out on your screen right now. Thanks for watching, liking the video is very appreciated, and as always, we'll see ya.